It's Judy Tuesdays here on CU at USC. Tonight we have a very special and anonymous guest, LA Bay street artist who goes by the name Wordsmith. Welcome back to see you at USC. We're sitting down tonight with published author, screenwriter, and world-renowned street artist, Wordsmith. Thank you so much for coming on tonight, Wordsmith. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. So what inspired the name Wordsmith, specifically with no vowels? Um, when I was getting the crazy notion to possibly do street art, as I, everybody does, I was trying to think of a name. And at first I came up with Wordsmith in LA. Um, because I thought that was, I thought it was funny. I thought it was a little bit of an oxymoron because wordsmith to me harkens back to the old days of writing, you know, journalists and uh, novelists, you know what I mean? Even like the New York kind of writer and not to rip on LA because I love it, but it's a different type of writing here. Mm -hmm. So I thought wordsmith in LA was kind of funny. And um, I started doing some searching and wordsmith as a whole word wasn't available. But then when I saw that wordsmith with no vowels was available on the things like Instagram, um, I liked it. I, and it wasn't funny anymore. It was actually just kind of cool. And, mm -hmm. and it just kind of like fit in with everything I aimed to do as, as a street artist. Okay. And you like to keep your identity private and you stay anonymous and we see the hat. Zoom in, everyone. Well, not on his face, just on the hat. So what inspired you to remain anonymous here? Is it for your art or was it for some of the legality? Um, there's a lot of things in, the, in to answer that question. I think in the beginning, um, it was more about the legality um, because what street artists do, what I am doing, is taking a, a spray paint can, spray paint spray spray paint can to the wall, and that is illegal. Um, the action of painting on a wall, LA made legal years ago. You know what I mean? I think they looked at it as a gateway to gang, so they put those laws in to effect. So I think every you know artist that does that is kind of looking over their shoulder. Um, but as time went on and um, Things happen with 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 my career. You know what I mean? Like the city of LA started hiring me to put uh, inspirational and motivational words up all over the city. I kind of started caring less about the legality. You know what I mean? I'm still always careful when I'm out in the streets, but it's not about you know the the fear of the legality anymore. Um, I remain anonymous now just because the mystery works in my favor but also I want to put the emphasis on the words. I want to put the emphasis on the work um, because it's, it's not about me per se. It's about the messages that I'm trying to deliver. So if I can do that in a, I don't know, Robin Hood sort of way or just kind of like add that, you know, interest of who's doing this, who's getting up in the middle of the night and, you know, putting stuff up on mm -hmm. buildings and, and, and just doing it, the, that kind of craziness, that mystery works in my favor. Mm, it really does add to the excitement, um, the anonymity. So you have a very refined background in writing. You are a published author, a screenwriter. How has your background in writing contributed to your success as an artist? Um, I think at the foundation of it, it's just my love of writing in all forms and a lot of different mediums. Um, just makes me happy. Like it's what I'm passionate about. Um, I've even worked in fields where as I've advanced in them, like I used to work in documentary TV. Mm -hmm. um, I was good at it, I guess, because then they were like, hey, do you want to produce? Do you want to direct? And I did it for a while, and I guess I was good at that too, but then I started resenting it because I just wanted to write. So I actually even said that to you know bosses. I'm like, can I just write, you know what I mean, and not you know do all that? So I know that about me, that I just love the written word. Um, but as far as my path, um, out of school, I worked in advertising. I was, I was living in Chicago. 
Um, and then um, that cliche, I actually quit my job because I wasn't doing the exact type of writing that I wanted to do. It wasn't creative enough. So I quit my job and decided to move to Los Angeles and worked as a screenwriter. Um, I wrote a lot of short films. I worked in documentary TV and I also uh, published an author, or I'm sorry, I, I wrote a novel that ended up getting published. Um, so all that is what I'm saying is like writing in those different mediums and especially that path from advertising to getting the crazy notion to become or try to become a street artist, it all worked in my favor, you know what I mean? Because when I was thinking about being a street artist, um, you know, I, I was trying to figure out what exactly I do and I knew almost immediately that if I did anything it would be word based and if it was word based there would be the image of the typewriter and mm -hmm. it just kind of like it was a domino effect but as I started doing it and and crafting the words that merger of worlds and just everything from my past including the advertising just came into play um, and it made me happy like I was having fun when I first started doing it I started doing it for me like I needed an active hobby I just wanted something that got me away from the computer mm -hmm. for stretches of time. So again, I got that crazy notion and came up with Wordsmith and started doing it and it fit the bill. It reinvigorated me, it energized me and it was awesome. But then really early on I started seeing that the words were resonating with people mm -hmm. and then it just kept kept going. It was a major domino snowball effect, whatever you want to call it. And now it's crazy. I do I do Wordsmith full time and, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. That's awesome. Honestly, LA residents know that when they see a typewriter anywhere on a wall somewhere, they're in for some good stuff. Honestly, this is a pretty negative political climate we're living in. The world in general can be a negative place, but a lot of your art is so positive. And mm -hmm. what inspires you to kind of play that role? Well, I am a very, I'm a positive person, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I always um, try to take the half full, you know, with anything kind of outlook. And I'm also a romantic person, so that comes into play too. But when I first started uh, wordsmithing, um, I wanted to be positive. It actually started where I just wanted to say things to people in Hollywood that I wish people would have said to me when I first got here. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was funny because it started very focused and, you know what I mean? Because it can be hard, it can be negative, it can be, you know, it's a roller coaster ride on a daily basis when you're trying to chase your dreams in Hollywood or anywhere. And that's part of it too. Like I learned really early on that it wasn't just about doing time in Hollywood, it's doing time anywhere. Like people have dreams all over this planet. You know, I always say that, you know, while there are people chasing their dreams here in, in, in Los Angeles, there are, you know, dentists in the Carolinas that want to be an actor. There are stockbrokers in Chicago that want to write a book. You know what I mean? So we all kind of have this notion of, I don't know, just just dreams, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. even if you're doing something, you kind of have this idea that, you know, one day I'm going to write this book, you know what I mean? One day I'm going to do this. And, and so my messages... Um, they didn't change. It's just I realized that the that the audience was much larger than just Los Angeles. You know what I mean? Obviously, people are looking for positivity and and motivation and inspiration. Um, and it, like you said, especially in this day and age, they're looking for that um, constantly. You know what I mean? And 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 it is sadly a breath of fresh air when you encounter that. And and the way that I'm doing it, it's especially you know the way I started. It's it's you're turning a corner. And you might see one of my messages and and that's what makes me happy if that puts a smile on your face or changes your moment or your day or has a butterfly effect because you take a picture and send it to somebody and and you know share it it's that's incredible you know what I mean and and that's what happened or that's what is happening with this whole endeavor is that people are sharing you know the words and it is a way now it's I realize it's a way of expressing yourself in mm -hmm. this day and age um, I had a conversation with somebody else and this is when I realized it. We live in a day and age of like texting and emoticons and emojis and mm -hmm. we're, we're communicating less and less or more succinctly I should say. But the action of seeing one of my pieces, taking a photograph and sending it to someone to motivate them or maybe it's a romantic message that is going the extra step, you know what I mean? It's like back in, you know, years past, it would be sending like a greeting card, 
You know what I mean? People don't do that a lot anymore, but sending a photo or tagging somebody in a photo that expresses something of that nature is is this action and and somehow i stumbled into into that you know place and time kind of thing and it's it's mm -hmm. pretty cool to be to be a part of that yeah do you feel like you're sort of in the wrong time period no oh that's a really good question i'd see where you're going with that but no <laughs> i i like being in this um time period and and that's weird like like there's another part of that question like sometimes i look at wordsmith and i'm like how wasn't i doing this for the last five years or ten years because it is this merger of worlds and and it really does feel like my calling you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i really am enjoying it but it doesn't work that way it's like whenever you stumble upon it and and kind of get that capture that magic in a bottle type thing you know you just got to be happy for it so I, I, if I if given a time machine as fascinating as that is i think i'm i'm going to say this time period is is where i want to be um just because you know what i mean like i'm having a good time and and it just seems like as far as wordsmith it was definitely the right place in time okay and one of your pieces you didn't say verbatim but you said the thing i love most about la is the people mm -hmm. and the thing i hate most about la is the people what has it been like adjusting to la coming from the midwest chicago and ohio um there's an interesting story there because i actually moved here just for career reasons and <laughs> I'll be honest, I thought I would hate it. Mm -hmm. um, I had friends that lived here before I, 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 I moved and they were like, oh, if you wanna be a writer, you should, you should come to LA, you know what I mean? It's the place for it. And I was like, I'm not gonna move there, there's no way, it's just not me, and it's just, it seemed like I was allergic to it. But I did, I quit my job and I decided to move here and the city completely surprised me. Like three months in, I always tell this story, I was, I was at Runyon Canyon and I was like- Very LA. <laughs> yeah, very LA, of course. Um, um, and I was like, this place is awesome, like awesome. And, and now I've been here long enough where it's home and I just absolutely love it. But as far as adapting, it wasn't, it wasn't hard because first of all, I inherited a gr gr good group of friends and that's really important. You know, mm -hmm. LA can be an isolated or a lonely place, but, but I think the secret of it is just to find people that you like being around, you know what I mean? I think a lot of the time people make sacrifices or, or think they're furthering their careers by, this is, this is a huge tangent, but, do, but, but just like by, by spending time or working with people that they don't enjoy. For me, it's just like find that good group of friends that you trust, that you have common interests. And my belief in LA, like, like they always say in, in Hollywood, like it's who you know, but they say that like it's a bad thing. To me, it's a good thing. I think you come here, you settle in, you meet people, and hopefully, like I said, you like being around them, you like working with them, and you rise together. That's, it's who you know, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if you have each other's backs, it makes LA, you know, just such an incredible, um, such a different place, I can say, because I, you know what I mean? There's a lot of different LAs for a lot of different people. But my experience, LA was always good to me, and I knew I was supposed to be here because even when I was struggling, I was so much happier than when I was, you know, in Chicago and and doing what I was doing. So, so I don't know if I answered your question other than LA again completely surprised me, and I love it here. Mm -hmm. But there's there's definitely kind of like a secrets or ways it's to kind of mm, make it a better experience or 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 just enjoy it on a daily basis. No, for sure. And L.A. loves you. L.A. has officially hired you. Like the city yes. of L.A. has hired you to do works of art all over the city. How has that impacted you? Um, it's incredible. It's incredible to have that opportunity. Um, again, I started out, you know, doing renegade pieces and I still do renegade pieces. I will always do, you know, just, you know, stuff. That's what street artists do. You know, we're always looking at walls and, and kind of want to make our mark. But I have had the incredible opportunity to be given walls or to be hired. Like the city hired me to put messages along the route of the LA Marathon. And that was, that was awesome. That was the first time that, that I was hired by the city to do that. And mm -hmm. it was eye opening for me because it was, it was no longer, you know, the fear of, oh, you know what I mean? I, I might get caught. I could still, you know what I mean? Get caught, you know what I mean? Because what I'm doing, but if, if a, 
if a policeman rolled up now, I, I have more confidence to talk to them and say, what I'm doing is not destroying, mm -hmm. it's beautifying. I'm trying to motivate people. I'll take the piece down if you want right now, but look at it, you know what I mean? You can't say that that's not a good thing, you know what I mean? Like, laws be damned, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. still a good thing. Like, at the heart of it, I have the best intentions and I'll stand by that. And I, you have to stand by that, no matter what you're deciding to do, you have to be passionate about it, you have to believe in it. I happen to be do some, doing something that's not exactly legal, but I still stand by it, and I think people respect that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully any law enforcement you know, person having a good day, bad day, or whatever kind of day, you know, will, will understand that. Yeah, for sure. Well, we'll be back with the man who's beautifying the City of Angels, one work of art at a time. Stay tuned after the break. Welcome back, guys. We're going to get to learn a little bit more about our very special guest, Wordsmith. So, Wordsmith, did you come from a family of artists? No. I am <laughs> the only creative person in my family. My, uh, I have a brother and sister, and they are, they're crazy successful, but totally in the business world. And I and my, and my, and my mom and dad, I mean, my dad's a little creative. He was like an architectural engineer, but he has more of a... Uh, math uh, uh, head than or brain than I ever did um, so I don't know where I got the cre creativity from but um, um, I know part of it like my parents were actually um, strict mm -hmm. um, and I was the youngest so I was the one always trying to get away with everything and the story I always tell is that led to being punished a lot and I spent a lot of time in my room being grounded and that just made me read like I was a comic book kid and a daydreamer and and that just was the beginning of the snowball effect that I think kind of made me creative and ultimately made me a writer because I even looked at comic books like like I didn't care oddly enough like like I was more fascinated with how the characters were written and how the story was written you know back in the day but you know there was always the fascination with the art but I was more fascinated and even movies too like I was like oh that was a great movie but then I wanted to know how that person created that world and created those characters okay so you had a hunch as a child you knew that you were a writer yeah I, at first I wanted to be an astronaut then I thought I'd be a teacher <laughs> oddly enough I was I was a, I was like a 12 year old kid saying that oh I want to be a teacher I don't know if that ever happens and then yeah once I really got into you know later high school and especially college it was writing it was always um, creative writing and, and kind of figuring that out okay so explain to us viewers because we're all really interested to know what is the process of creating a piece around the city I see there you're actually <laughs> using like some construction tools actually to get up there high on the wall but what is the typical process for you when you're creating some of your art um the process starts with with the writing you know what i mean and mm -hmm. that's beautiful that's the foundation mm -hmm. and every like 98 percent of the words you see um i write every now and then i'll pay tribute to like a lyric or a quote from a movie and when you see that that's because i think that lyric or quote is so damn good that I'm mad I didn't come up with it. So I have to tip my hat to it. And I do that, but I always give credit to whatever artist came up with that. But the other 98% comes from me. And there's something in that statement, like all the words are rooted in something in my life. You know what I mean? It's either something I really believe in or um, really ex wanna express to other people or maybe an individual person. And it's rooted in something that I then kind of, you know, um, play with, I, 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 I polish and I make sure that, you know, the words before I put them on the wall are the best words possible and the least amount of words possible. I'm mm -hmm. a firm believer as a writer in less is more. Mm -hmm. And that also comes from the advertising background, but it's more that like even in long form writing, less is more, you know what I mean? The less words you can use, um, it's just the more effective. So that actually comes into play on the wall too. But to answer your question, once I've figured out exactly what I wanna say, mm -hmm. um, uh, the process of getting it up on the wall is printing it for the, the page is usually paper. 
Um, that's another thing. Like all my pieces are the typewriter is painted via uh -huh. stencil, and then I usually wheat paste the page above it. So okay. that's why I got excited about the idea in the first place. It's just simple. It's a page coming out of a typewriter. Um, and that's what you normally see on the wall. As I do larger pieces, including that one in West Palm Beach where I was up on the crane that you saw in the video, um, I'm doing all paint versions. So basically the preparation for it is creating a stencil for the typewriter and then either wheat pasting the page or creating a stencil for the words that you see on the wall. Um, and I love my process of creating uh, the stencils. I actually learned it from another street artist. His name's, oddly enough, Teacher. Um, mm -hmm. He's a fantastic artist, and he had this uh, process that I started doing and then over time have kind of like changed and refined mm -hmm. um, and kind of tried to make it my own, even though it's definitely, you know, the, the thought behind it is originates there. So I make my stencils, and then there's more work on the forefront before I get you know to the wall creating the stencils and making sure it's going to be perfect and then once I put it up I actually work very quickly stencils themselves that's the reason they were born basically it was a way to do art very quickly in the streets because mm -hmm. you're doing it illegally um, so so that part of it's there but even when I'm given a wall you know what I mean it's still the process of a painting is actually pretty quickly because the stencils have all been thought out and planned out and and created and brought with me okay I see photos of you doing artwork during the day and now I I know our producer some of the viewers would assume that you kind of come out in the middle of the night and you're masked and then you you take a wall you put your art up and then like you vanish once the sun rises and then we all see it oh look words been struck again but what is the process like do you go out in the middle of the night or do you just kind of do the work during the day um, I, I definitely started out doing um, night. Uh, in the very beginning, I did night, like a lot of artists do, and I didn't enjoy it because L.A., especially L.A., is still alive mm -hmm. at night. There's just so much going on. There's still so much traffic, depending where you are, that, that I just it was a little too... I don't know, strenuous. Like I was always looking over my shoulder and you can't see what's coming, literally. So I started, I'm an early riser. I've always been an early riser. That's odd for a writer, but um, um, I learned I do my best writing in the morning and I love it. Mm -hmm. So when I started wordsmithing, I started getting up just a little earlier. Like I started getting up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock and the city was asleep. It's so quiet and you can hear and see most things coming, you know what I mean? And you can kind of either be prepared for it or just make sure that you're not painting, you know what I mean, while while there's something, you know, potentially, you know what I mean, a car or, or whatever, a person coming. So so I liked the morning um, and I still do that every now and then, like, like um, depending what I'm doing, what I'm trying to accomplish, I might still do an early morning run or even a middle of the night. Um, but, but what I learned is, um, I'm going to tell you all my secrets. What I learned <laughs> over time is, um, and it was after I was given my first wall, it was uh, one of my first walls, it was on Hollywood Boulevard, and I took my time with it. So I'm sitting there for like over an hour, you know, making this thing beautiful. Mm -hmm. And when I was done, I was just about to pack up. I'm like, I was on Hollywood Boulevard at one o'clock in the afternoon for an hour. I never looked over my shoulder. Nobody ever stopped me. Nobody ever questioned. And a light bulb went off in my head. And I realized that anything you do in the middle of the night or at five o'clock in the morning, there's a spotlight on you. You look guilty. Mm -hmm. But if you <laughs> go out at noon and you look like you're supposed to be there, you can get away with a lot of stuff. So a lot of the work I do now, I do during the day. Um, and it's, it's crazy, but like nobody questions. They just think you're supposed to be there. And, and it's, it's actually a little secret that I learned along the way. Okay. You mentioned being given a wall at one point. How do you choose your locations and do you try to match them with the statement you make or do you just get the wall and that's kind of where you choose to go ahead and put your uh, Another great question. Um, I, it goes both, it goes a lot of different ways. Like sometimes I will write a word and I'll be looking for the perfect location for it because I want it to be paid off. Like I've actually, I've carried words for like months. Like there was one that I just put up in Berlin actually mm -hmm. um, and it was the perfect spot for it but I had been carrying it for like three or four months like looking for that perfect spot. Then there are other times that I'll be walking or driving and I'll see 
a wall and what something in the background or maybe the certain time of day or just the setting and it'll it'll inspire me to write something you know what I mean and say oh this is the perfect like one 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 um, example is um, I saw a plastic surgery um, company and it was this literally a swan and it was a plastic surgery thing on this major street and immediately I just thought of this word that I wanted to put in front of it and that word was I really 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 like you just the way you are oh. and I did that and it was very well received I mean people mm -hmm. love that I don't know if you call it a juxtaposition but just that positioning so yeah. I do do that every now and then and, and sometimes you know something like that will inspire me to write something or vice versa sometimes I'll be looking for the perfect wall then there are the times that um, the city will give me a wall or a, a merchant will give me a wall or I'll be hired to put you know something like I just did something in downtown LA at one Santa Fe um, which is right by Cafe Gratitude okay. and that was awesome because I I was able to do it 11 foot by like 30 foot piece and and I planned it out you know what I mean even working with that company because they, they they hired me to put something great up there or that they liked up there that you know I showed them a couple mock-ups and they just loved what they saw and and I could I could make that a reality I could take my time making that a reality so so it's good on many different levels you know what I mean like mm -hmm. and I and I even that like I looked at the wall and I tried to figure out what are the best words in the positioning for them okay well, it was lovely having a word with you tonight, Wordsmith. <laughs> See what I did there? You can follow Wordsmith on Instagram at Wordsmith with no vowels, of course, and follow us at C U A T U S C on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.